Hi, my name is Sam Durkin, I'm an artist, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to paint an abstract painting. Um, there's a basis for all my abstract paintings, I try to have come from uh, sort of a place of reality, but I then produce an abstract painting as well. This one is going to be particularly abstract, more possibly than my other videos have been, um, and in that sense, uh, you'll be going on the journey with me because a pure abstract painting has an awful lot of um, twos and fro's in it where we sort of we're making it up as we go along. The concept I have is that uh, we're looking into a misty forest, so the background is going to be quite pale and uh, washed out, uh, and the trees are almost emerging out of the out of the mists. Normally, I work in the three primary colours: uh, red, yellow, and blue. But primarily, we're going to be using burnt umber. Putting the paint onto the canvas here. Now remember where our horizon is, let's put that in there. Cool, this is an abstract, we can, we can mess around with it. And uh, our two darker trees are going to be here and here. So let's not, let's not get too fussy about where that is. But uh, there we go. We've, where the trees might be and we've kind of got an idea of sort of treeness in the background. We're using these long strokes to get that effect and a two inch brush, okay? This two inch brush allows us to paint really very big wide brush strokes so this whole tree is essentially just almost one and a half of those. Uh, but also when we want to paint thinner strokes we just put the brush on its edge and we put them down like that and if we want a slightly wider stroke we do is we angle the brush at an edge so it takes the brush stroke down and it's wider. Essentially, the wider you want the stroke, the more you angle the brush until it becomes flat. Now, we may add some color to it as we go along, but um, for the time being, this is our, this is our base coat. Of this. It's, the, it's the building blocks for the rest of our painting. We've left the painting to dry. It's still a little bit tacky because we've only left it for about 15 minutes, but I don't want to, I don't want to crack on and make, and make some more changes to this. So what I'm going to do, is do that right now. It's dry enough that this should take, we'll find out in a moment. Okay, just taking the pure white, just mixing white. We don't need um, anything special like titanium white or anything like that. Make sure our brush is nice and clean. We're going to be probably picking up some paint from the canvas anyway, so let's just get our pure white. Now we did say we we're going to have some light coming through here, so we probably want to better put that in. So let's, let's, uh, Start with that, okay? So let's put some areas of white into the canvas. So let's bring our sunlight out across here, and we'll do areas like this. I 
think it's probably a good idea to have left it uh, slightly wet because we are picking up some of the paint there. Painting negatively, so we're not bad at painting the trees, we're painting the light between the trees. We'll get some over here as well to define this edge of this. So we've added some extra light and some, some, some whiteness coming through and we wait for it to dry just enough, about 15 minutes or so with an acrylic paint, just so it's slightly tacky but not, um, not dry yet and certainly not wet, okay, because that, helped, that allowed us to mix the paint on the canvas as we went. I might leave it dry for a good long time this time, maybe an hour or two, just to give us um, a proper dry canvas. That will give us a very different effect when we're painting on it, um, because every paint stroke will become solid and bold. As you see, I've worked on the canvas a little bit more. I've put some more light in, so we've really got some light coming out, and I've moved it across, so it feels like it's dramatically coming across the painting. Okay, what I've done secondly is I've mixed yellow, red and blue, just the primary colours okay, we're not talking any special special colours here, um, they're, they're just the primary colours and I really do suggest you use those mostly, I mean obviously we were using some raw, uh, some burnt umber here in the background as our, as our basic trees, but the primary colours really are great for bringing vibrancy to a painting. Mix those together, edit some, edit some blue to get some slight greenness and darkness to it, this is mostly about getting, and I'm using a fan shaped brush, quite a large one, just roughly putting this in. Now I want, I want you to imagine that this is the light source, okay, so as our light source is coming, uh, anywhere we've got trees or anything, we, we're imagining that the light source, that, that there are shadows being cast by the trees, so we're putting the darker bits across where we think there are shadows, and we're, we're, we're breaking up the space. Okay, now there's light going through here. Now, we have to remember this light's coming onto this, so we're gonna need some more of the yellow in this sort of area to get out of that sort of yellowy green touch. So we're slightly more, slightly more yellow here than maybe at the edges, but we're, we're, we're gonna put some of that in here just to, just to illustrate, so we'll follow that light source down. Imagine that there's trees in the way, okay, so some of that light is casting through here, just like this. Then we take the dark, okay, so we're mixing the red and the blue together to get the darker areas. Keeping your brush not too, not too wet. And just get that sort of brackens shape and we sort of move the brush around just to produce that kind of just to produce those brackeny brackeny pieces okay now we're moving into the misty part of this painting here as you see you know this the canvas is mostly dry at this point so everything we paint from it is it, going to be it's going to be quite bold and strong because of that now to limit some of that to merge it back into the background we take some of that burnt Number again. Not worrying about cleaning the brush too much, although well, we want to clean it a little bit, but there will be some paint left on after you put it in the water. Take some of your white, take some of your burnt umber, mix that together until we get kind of the same kind of tone we have here, okay? But now we're gonna take a look at this colour here that we've mixed and see if we can get a sort of in-between, in-between these kind of Color there, so let's, let's see if oh, it's a bit too bright. There's a little bit more burnt sienna in. Looks like burnt umber. Right, okay, now we can mix that with our, 
with a yellow here. Through some sort of light that's coming. So imagine this, this light's coming, coming through the trees. Just highlighting just a few of the brackens. And as we get closer to the front, we have to imagine that we're getting closer up to the camera. So, so we almost can put a few little streaks in. Do the same over here. There we go. Get quite bright up in the front here, imagine we've got some the lights really, really powerful here, so we can get quite bright with this. There we go, look at that, look at that. We've got that, that, that light speckling coming through, just, just catching some of the some of the bracken. Imagine that's trees casting a little bit of a shadow down here. And there's these, these little bit spots, spots of light dappled from the there we go, a little bit because that's that angle's coming really across it, so we can get just, just these little bits up like that. bottom here because these are these are really close to things that almost went almost made them out of focus like that. There we go, look, look at that. Little tiny touches there. Don't forget to put the darker areas in as well. We're mixing almost so there's there's bits of blue there, there's little bits of red as well so it's kind of like we're using that kind of impressionist Freshness palette. There we go. Okay, right, well, that's really enhanced the painting you've got down. We're we really starting to see a forest come out of it. We will need to darken these trees, which uh, we can do now, because they're not wet, and the painting around them we're not really going to touch. So let's get another one of our, our two inch brushes back up again. So we're taking the color we mixed before, so we've got that sort of greeny brown. All the, all the primaries are mixed together. When you mix all the primaries together, you virtually get a black. Okay, so we're gonna be doing that nice bold blackness here, okay? Now, as you see, I'm just painting on this side of the tree because we imagine that there's a light hitting this side here. Hi, right, well, worked on this a lot. Um, all the dark trees in now. Here we can see we've got our red, yellow, and blue. Uh, there's all my major primaries together. What I'm going to do is mix the yellow and red. There's already some more here on the canvas anyway, but I need a little bit more. This blue will mix in and will darken it. If we go too much yellow, it'll go green. If we go too much red, it'll go purple. If we mix it uh, equally, we'll go to black, but we're not going to be able to do that because um, it will be technically impossible for just to do that by eye, but we'll get close. So this is probably towards the blue-green end, more than anything. You can test it out and see what colour you get. Now that probably looks like black on, on the uh, camera.
Right, well, we start to come along with this a lot now. Um, the trees are a lot darker. Uh, we've added abstract elements of the squared brush strokes using our flat-ended brushes, this one-inch brush and uh, the two-inch brush as well. And we're bringing in some bold colors. So we've got our reds and our blues and our yellows. And we're mixing them quite uh, quite strongly onto the, onto the canvas without too much care. Um, we're gonna echo this through the rest of the painting with some uh, more light as it comes, but I'm gonna wait for this to dry before we do that because uh, there's still bits of paint here and I don't want that to travel across the canvas. Some of the worst things, some of the worst mistakes you can make are to, to mix colors on the canvas when you don't want to do that. When you do want to do it, brilliant. When you don't want to do it, tragedy because you'll pick up paint from the, from let's say you'll just catch this piece of the tree and you're trying to paint white across the, the canvas and now you've got a bit of dark black on it and you'll be starting to mark bits of the painting with the black and you won't be able to pull them back easily it will take a little bit of work to do that so best leave it to dry and then we'll come back and then work on it a little bit more Okay, well, we finally finished the painting. And as you see, it's full of color now. Uh, we've got lots and lots of abstract shapes all the way across the canvas. Uh, as you see, we've come right down here. There's, there's just lots of mess and splodges that sort of indicate light and, and stuff from the, from the painting. We've kept it as abstract as we possibly can all the way across. Uh, there's, we've got this light source here that we, we, we feel it is, is, is streaming light across the thing and our minds are putting the whole painting together and we're just enjoying the feeling that we're looking at a landscape in a forest and we've, we've got that feeling but we also know that we're looking at an abstract painting we're not we, we haven't gone into intricate detail we're not doing a, a massive study of all the flower and floor, fauna and making it exactly right we're just allowing it to to happen in our minds almost like looking at a dreamscape thank you for watching it's been great uh, i'm sure you got something out of it uh, and if you did then uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, share it with your friends uh, do make a comment if uh, if there's any questions you might have to ask about it or just to say what you liked about the uh, the demonstration this painting will be available for sale uh, from my website for those that can't afford the original or if it's gone and you really wanted a copy then uh, there'll be prints available for the details up here in a moment as always um, happy painting and i hope you, uh, you get the best out of it